My name is Deborah Schwarzkopf and I'm a potter. Some of the people I admire the most are potters and I wanted to take on their um, lifestyle and adopt their priorities and be part of their community. I grew up in a family with a grandmother that the first thing she would ask you is are you hungry and she wasn't asking if you were hungry she was telling you she was gonna feed you and that she loved you but she didn't have those words so she would always ask us if we were hungry and then proceed to feed us amazing food and it wasn't fancy food but it was comforting and it was a way that she showed affection. So that's something that I took on. It's part of my family legacy to care for people by feeding them. So it was a natural um, extension of that to make something also to put it on. I think uh, I originally followed in this path to be a potter because that was the community that gave me a place to belong first. And um, that was, that came at a time in my life when I really needed it. I think since adopting, you know, that path as a potter, one of the things that's really held me is the challenge of clay um, that I feel like I'm constantly learning. It's important for me to not feel bored and I can never feel bored as a potter. There's always another thing to discover or another small change to make. One of the things I love about working in clay is the way that process can be an idea giver. So just seeing these repeating patterns sometimes helps me think of new shapes to try. I get ideas by sketching. I get ideas from leftover pieces that I haven't used. Um, and piecing those together. I really get ideas from looking at uh, shapes around me just in the environment and then abstracting those into my work. And often with my work, I'll start um, with a shape instead of with a function and then make it more functional because I really want it to work. And on the other hand, I'm also really influenced at the dinner table and um, seeing things used is important and can really spur ideas as well. I spend a lot of time in the garden, and the garden is another type of working, um, but fortunately for me, I love working. And so I take breaks by working on something else, and I just love to see the processes of the garden, the things unfolding, like flowers or uh, shoots coming up, um, changing the compost, <laughs> checking for eggs, all of those things just make me see different processes and they help me notice the processes in my work and it just, I don't know, those small bits of seeing push my work forward. In my studio practice, I often set aside time just to explore and not worry about if I have a a piece to put in the kiln. Um, often this happens if I make too many of one shape and I don't have enough energy to finish it to the level I want to, then I can use those parts and pieces to just see what I can combine together. When I teach workshops, I often use that as a time to explore also. Um, just watching other people explore helps me want to be in that vein. And so if there's a moment to just try something different, I will. And when I'm teaching, I think it's important too to fail because really watching failure can teach more than watching success. So trying something new shows how I can um, work through a difficulty instead of just nailing it. The compromise for me of being a potter is that I've adopted a life full of risk and that this lifestyle requires a lot of energy to sustain um, in order to adapt to a material that can crack or a kiln that can fail or a fluctuating income um, just requires a lot of resilience. Uh, the most difficult thing I do in my studio is pause and decide to take a break. I really love working, but I also am learning more and more that I need to feed myself 
by resting and um, taking time in the garden and taking time with friends and family and just to have a moment to reflect and notice the progress and that that gives me a huge amount of excitement. Uh, the most important tool for me is the mental stamina and I feel like this is something that waxes and wanes with my studio practice and um, I'm really interested in will as a tool and it, maybe it sounds negative but I think um, discipline is positive and I find a lot of satisfaction in seeing myself decide to do something and follow through and I think follow through is one of the biggest tools you can have as a potter. The shape of my cup is something that has grown over the whole course of making. So saying where that specific shape comes from is really hard. Um, I love to puzzle things together. If I can make it complicated, I will. <laughs> it's not always a good trait. Um, but I, I wanted a shape that captured a sense of body, but also a sense of edge so that there's a tension between the softness and the sharpness. Part of the way that my shapes evolved was because I initially had two very separate bodies of work. One was all hand-built and one was all wheel-thrown. And over time, these two blended. So I was really blending um, a desire to make something that was really expressive and not as functional with something that was very much just about holding water or tea or coffee. So now I feel like I'm trying to do both of those things. I'm trying to make a vessel that's about function but also has intention and that that intention would bring the user some sort of journey. I like to think of these handles that they're springing off the cup. They have a lot of energy. So by blending, wheel throwing, and hand building, now I feel like I have both the functional and the expressive qualities that I was seeking after so that I'm making a functional object that's full of intention. And then I'll just go around the seam a little bit just to make sure it's really on there. 